uh, this experience is from my novel, The Brotherhood. <laughs> um, it's part of a trilogy. Um, and this, uh, what I'm about to read, my experience. Uh, this is uh, where Amrit, a troubled uh, 20-something Hindu zealot, recounts to his friend Nero the story of his meeting with scripper Lauren, uh, who he hopes to teach and re rehabilitate. He has just been dunked in a pool outside uh, the 53rd Street, Lexington Avenue uh, station by teenagers while trying to pass out religious pamphlets. He's also been mugged, cannot get home, so he treks to an old childhood friend's apartment in Murray Hill. His friend Vishal Patel is a wealthy hedge fund manager, and Amrit finds him entertaining his co-workers with a bevy of young women. After the guard let him up, Amrit listened at Vishal's door and heard riotous laughter. And when the door opened, someone beautiful stood there, a brunette with pigtails. Yet behind her, Amrit observed the most appalling debauchery. Michelle told me to dry myself off in the bathroom, Amr recounted, and he was setting me up with the girl. I was not sure if he was condescending or joking, but I stayed in that room for many minutes. It felt like an hour until Michelle knocked at it and asked me to emerge. I did not know what else to do, so I entered the room again and averted my eyes from the sight, the very opposite of what I had been preaching. My heart sank at the kinds of things I observed happening on the floor, with Vishal watching and laughing, even commanding his lackeys on. He offered me a drink, I declined, and then the hors d'oeuvres, for even my physical hunger could not match my spiritual devastation. Immediately I headed for the balcony, and confronted by that ironic sight of hypocritical majesty, ignored it and stared down at the abyss. I felt for a second that my destiny lay there. You wanted to kill yourself, Nero asked. It was too much to bear. The air was cold, it observed nothingness in the distance, the erection of civilization's discontent. But then she arrived. She grabbed my shoulder, she stopped me from leaving. Lauren? She comforted me, she told me everything would be okay. And when she sensed my hunger and discomfort, she asked Michelle if she could take me out to eat. And he laughed at that in his typical way like he did when we were teenagers, always superior, like he was always one step ahead. That was the first time I'd gone to a restaurant since my days at Harvard, when my mother's death had made me see the error of my godless ways. But I somehow felt special and comforted on that ride across the water where Gunga resides, Lauren's blanket around me, and we landed at this shining institution where I was offered immaculate food. I broke my vows as my physical hunger overpowered me. Afterwards, I felt devastated again, remembering the experience of the night. Yet across from me, my salvation sat, hungry herself not for food but for something else, and eager to feast from my mind. That is when it started. That is when I realized that my true path lay not in educating thousands, but in lifting up one individual at a time. <laughs>